The second you sit down at the tables in Vegas, you're left with two options. You can win big or you can lose. But whichever you land on, the house always wins. And the credit card game is no different. Whether you're new to the game or a high roller, today I'm gonna to go over the top 10 mistakes to avoid when getting into the credit card game. Hey, travel hackers and future travel hackers. You can call me Lonnie, and I'm no different than you. I like taking vacations, but I don't like paying for them out of pocket. Now, I'm not new to the credit card game, but at one point in the long, long ago, I was. But if you are new, then you're in the right place. Before you go sign up for a new car that your friend says is great, but you never actually see them use it, let's go over the top 10 mistakes to avoid when creating your own personal credit card strategy. Now, disclaimer, this list is my own personal opinion, thus you may not agree with everything I say. And that's okay. If you have a different perspective, leave it in the comments below, okay? Let's get into it. At number one, we have not getting rid of your debit card. Your debit card does not provide you with any points, miles, perks, or benefits. Debit cards also offer little to no fraud protection. If your debit card is stolen, you could be held liable for the fraudulent charges. With a credit card, you are typically only liable for a small amount, if any at all. When you use your debit card, Money is instantly debited from your account, which can lead to overspending. When you use a debit card, you are essentially spending real money from your checking account. This can make it easier to overspend as you may not be mindful of your spending as you would be if you were using a credit card. Debit cards can also damage your credit score. If you carry a balance on your debit card, it will be reported to credit bureaus as debt, and this can lower your credit score. With a credit card, you can build your credit history and improve your credit score by paying your balance in full each month. If you're looking for a more convenient and rewarding way to pay for your purchases, I recommend using a credit card instead of a debit card. Credit cards offer a number of benefits, including fraud protection, reward programs, and the opportunity to build your credit history. For number two, we have buying stuff you don't need just to hit a welcome bonus, which is a common practice, but it can also be a very slippery slope. It's important to remember that a welcome bonus is just a marketing tool, and the credit card company is counting on you to spend more than you would otherwise. If you're not careful, you can end up in debt or with a lot of stuff you have no long-term use for. I remember growing up, my dad always said, if you don't have it, you can't have it which means if you don't have the money for something or it's not practical, then you shouldn't buy it. This is often referring to impulse purchases. If you're thinking about buying something just to hit your welcome bonus, ask yourself if you really need it. If you don't, there are plenty of other ways to enjoy the benefits of the card without spending money on things you don't need. For example, if you're $500 away from your welcome bonus and you only have a few days left, instead of spending that money on new clothes, assuming you don't need any new clothes that is, spend that money on food, which can be frozen and placed into your freezer or on gas gift cards. These are things you will need later, guaranteed. At number three, we have applying for a new card when you don't have expenses that will assist you with hitting your welcome bonus. Are you getting married? Are you about to buy a new laptop or books for college? These are great times to sign up for a new card. It is not advisable to apply for a new card if you don't have the necessary expenses to meet the welcome bonus requirements. If your intro spend is $4,000 and you only hit $3,800, then you don't get that welcome bonus and you also don't get your money back. In addition, with most mid to high tier cards, you'll be charged an annual fee for the card and you may not earn enough points to offset the cost of the card. So my recommendation, if the card offers inflated points on a specific category, you may be better off using your intro spend on that category, which would land you more points, such as dining or groceries. For example, 
the American Express Gold Card offers 4x points on dining and groceries. So, if you spend a lot of money on those categories, you'll earn more points than if you use the card for other purchases. Number four is using more than 20% of your total credit limit. Your credit utilization ratio is the amount of debt you're using compared to the total available credit. It's calculated by dividing your total debt by your total credit limit. If you have a credit card with a $1,000 limit and you charge $200 on it, your credit utilization ratio would be 20%. A high credit utilization ratio can negatively affect your credit score. This is because it suggests that you're using a lot of your available credit, which could indicate that you're struggling to make your payments. Lenders use your credit score to assess your credit worthiness. So a high credit utilization ratio could make it more difficult to qualify for loans or get approved for lower interest rates. It's important to keep your credit utilization ratio in check. A good goal is to keep your utilization below 30%. However, even if your utilization is higher than that, it's not the end of the world. You can always pay down your credit balance before it's reported to the bureaus or just improve your credit score by making on-time payments and keeping your debt low. Now, number five is not paying your balance in full every month. Look, if you're not able to pay your balances in full every month, then the credit card game is not for you. Not only is this a bad idea, but it can have some serious consequences, such as high interest rates, late fees, damage to your credit score, and most of all, loss of your rewards. If you pay late fees or interest, any value you would have gotten from those rewards is now worthless as the late fees and interest has washed the value clean away. It's important to pay your credit card balance in full each month to avoid these consequences. Number six is not setting up auto pay. But I will add, not setting up auto pay is a choice. If you're responsible and can keep up with your various due dates, then cool. However, if you need a little more help or don't always keep up with your due dates, then it's in your best interest to set up auto pay so that you don't get hit with late fees or interest. This is because if you pay interest on your credit card debt, the points you earn are essentially worthless. You've now overpaid for those points because you have paid more than the original purchase price. Additionally, when you pay interest on your credit card debt, you are essentially subsidizing the cost of the credit for everyone else who pays their credit card bill on time and in full. So if you want to pay for my vacations, so be it. But it will be way easier if you just Venmo me the money directly. Moving on to number seven is not setting up security alerts. It's important to set up your security alerts on your credit cards to protect yourself from fraud. If you have multiple cards, it's even more important to set up alerts on all of them. This way, you'll be notified if there are any suspicious charges on your account. Let's say you're in California and a charge comes from Texas later that day. You'll want to be notified so that you can take action to protect your account. You can also set up security alerts to be sent to your phone, email, or both. You can also choose to be notified for specific types of charges, such as international transactions or large purchases. Setting security alerts is a simple way to add an extra layer of protection. For number eight, we have not researching cards before you apply. Some main reasons why you should not just apply for a card because you heard it's great or your friend got it, or despite it being made out of metal, it won't make you look more important and it's probably the hundredth one the waiter has seen that day but more importantly you may not actually need the features and benefits of the card or may not be able to justify its annual fee another reason that researching can work against you is that you might miss out on a higher sign up bonus or a zero percent introductory apr even sometimes you can find a car that is offering additional benefits such as travel rewards on an additional category. And then some cards only allow you to receive a welcome bonus once within a set period of time. So it's important to do your research before applying to make sure you get the best offer possible. The MX Gold and Platinum cards only allow you one welcome bonus for life. 
and the sign up bonus can vary depending on the time of the year you apply or even the website or web link you use to apply. For number nine, we have applying for the wrong card, which can be a costly mistake if you don't understand the terms and conditions of the card or not be able to use the card's benefits such as travel awards or cash back. Some tips to avoid applying for the wrong card are consider your spending habits. Choose a card that offers rewards that match your spending. If you've already applied for the wrong card, then contact the issuer and see if you can cancel, downgrade, or even upgrade the card to a different one. Getting a card which you can't use the benefits can be a waste of money especially if that card has an annual fee. If you don't travel often, then a travel card may not be a good choice for you. So choose a card that offers benefits that you will use and make sure you meet that spending requirement to earn those rewards. And lastly, at number 10, we have getting too many cards. If you have too many cards to manage, this can be a hassle to keep track of all those due dates, reward programs, and benefits. Having too many card benefits to keep track of can be overwhelming, and you may end up not using all the benefits that your cards offer. In addition, you may be subject to the Chase 524 rule. This rule states that you will not be approved for a new Chase credit card if you've opened five or more new credit cards in the past 24 months thus potentially preventing you from getting a card you really want. In addition, Amex has what's called pop-up jail. This is where Amex will not approve you for a new card or provide a new welcome offer, even if you're eligible for it. This usually happens if you've applied for too many Amex cards in a short period of time. So it's important to weigh the pros and cons of getting more credit cards before applying for a new one. And that's it. But before we go, there's one more bonus mistake, and that's not subscribing to this channel. If you learned anything, leave me a like and share this with your friends and family. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. I'll also leave links for some of the cards that I use down below. So your support helps me continue making this content for you. Other than that, peace and I'll catch you on the next vacation we don't pay for.